highlight of every NBA season, and in the league's silver anniversary year, the battle was played in the beautiful San Diego International Sports Arena, which provided the setting for 28 of the game's greatest stars. For some, like Chicago's Bob Love and Cleveland's rookie, Johnny Johnson, it is truly a dream game. The first time they've been accorded all-star honors. For others, it's an annual stop. Men like Oscar Robertson and Jerry West, Wilt Chamberlain, who are playing in their 11th annual all-star game. The veterans of the Eastern team are Willis Reed of New York, playing in his seventh game, and Boston's John Havlicek, appearing in his sixth. Red Holtzman of the defending world champion Knicks will coach the East team, and Larry Costello of the Milwaukee Bucks leads the West. The evening before the silver anniversary game, the NBA took time out to honor its stars from the past. Men who had made the first quarter century an unforgettable era. Like number nine, Bob Pettit, an all-NBA player for 10 years. Bob Pettit, the first player in history to go over the 20,000 point mark. Yes, Bob Pettit stands as a classic example of what determination can overcome. Looking back to a young man that more than anything in the world wanted to play basketball, wanted to win a high school letter. Started out as a freshman in high school, never scored a point. Went on from there to get cut from the team as a sophomore. To be here tonight to receive this honor is just beyond my comprehension. I'm honored. I'm proud. Thank you very much. Another man named to the Silver Anniversary team was George Mikan, who led the Minneapolis Lakers to five championships. At 6'10", he was the first of the big centers. A great competitor, all NBA six straight years. George Mikan. An honor bestowed upon a person like this is one, I guess, uh, you'll never forget. To be honored by your fellow players, to be a part of such a wonderful function, to be a part of all these wonderful people up here, the, it's a real thrill for me. Everything that I have today uh, came from this wonderful sport of basketball. It was sort of nice for a gangly guy like I, when I first took the court, and God bless my coach, Ray Meyer, to have his compassion for me. I tripped over the lines, they were too high. <laughs> so we had a long way to come. And to be honored here today, I'll never forget it. Thank you very kindly. The following night, the present day stars were back in the spotlight with Lou Alcindor and Willis Reed at center. On the very first play, Billy Cunningham drives for the basket and goes down hard with an eye injury. Fortunately, the injury turns out to be minor and Cunningham gets the game's first point on a free throw. Jerry Lucas counters for the West and a fine pass from Al Sindor. Bob Love shows he's not nervous in his first All-Star game, connecting on a 10-foot jumper. Los Angeles' Jerry West passes to Detroit's Dave Bing for a driving layup. Let's take another look at that play. It put the West in front 8-1. The East got moving on a Johnny Havlicek. 15-footer. The Knickerbocker Stars team up for a dandy, Frazier to Reed. Baltimore's Earl Monroe can do it all, even shooting over a mountain. Lucas trying to defend Frazier, but Frazier scores, and the East likes it outside. The West works in closer, Jerry West to Alcindor. Lou gets even closer with a great assist from Bing for a slam dunk. The East sends out a new team, and New York's Dave DeBusher cuts the West advantage. Baltimore's Wes Unseld hits from outside, too. Atlanta's Lou Hudson is on the front end of a long pass and gets an easy 
two-pointer. Boston's talented JoJo White puts the East within one point late in the first quarter. Chicago's Chet Walker tries a jump shot, and things are spinning just right for the West at this point. Al Sinder gets a little help in his short jumper, too. And the first quarter ends with a West in front, 30 to 26. As the second quarter gets underway, the West is protecting a four-point lead. Lenny Wilkins, the Seattle player coach, hits on a dribble drive. Unsold, a fine shooter, hits another one from outside. Oscar Robertson, playing in his 11th All-Star game, but the first time for the West, drives for two. JoJo White assists Gus Johnson as he counters for the East. Then it's Johnson again from long range, and the East leads for the first time, 36-35. Doesn't last long as Wilkins gets through on another drive. Tom Van Arsdale scores for the East on a jumper. The West turns to its big men for some fine passing, and it pays off with a bucket by Chet Walker. Chamberlain and Hayes team up again, and the West has another bucket. But the East is rolling too as Gus Johnson hits a jumper. And Johnny Green spins one in from close range to tie the game at 44. Wilkins connects on a long one to send the West back into the lead. But Tom Van Arsdale hits from the same distance for the East. It's a duel between the brothers as Dick Van Arsdale hits on a jumper and then comes back with a drive. It's the second straight year the former Indiana University stars have faced each other in all-star competition. Willis Reed goes to one of his favorite spots and hits for the East. Teammate Walt Frazier likes the 10-foot range also. The East goes to work on defense. Havlicek breaking up a Chamberlain pass to Jeff Mullins, and the Celtic captain has an easy bucket. But the West feels the play will work, and it does. Lucas is wide open after some sharp passing. Billy Cunningham hits a long jumper and the game is tied again, 56-56, late in the second quarter. So far, the action has been furious and sometimes the ball seems to have a will of its own. With an assist from Dick Van Arsdale, Chicago's Bob Love breaks another tie with a drive. Frazier knots it again at 60 with half a minute left in the first half. And Love comes right back with a jumper for the final points of the period. So at the halftime break, it's the West 62, the East 60. Both teams shot well, the West hitting 54%, the East, 50% from the field. The spotlight really belonged to Lenny Wilkins, the smallest man in the game at 6-1. In nine minutes of action in the second quarter, Lenny scored 12 points. He had five out of seven from the field, and at 33, playing in his eighth All-Star game, he showed he still has all the fluid moves that have made him such a standout in the NBA. The former star from Providence is one of the player coaches in the league. Wilkins and his West teammates lead by two points at halftime. And we'll be back for more All-Star Game action after this timeout. It's the start of the second half of the 1971 NBA All-Star Game. Lou Alcindor and Willis Reed are the opposing centers again. The West holds a slim lead, 62 to 60. The action is underway in Phoenix's Dick Van Arsdale, who had a fine first half, fails to connect on a long one. Jerry West of Los Angeles, who didn't score a point in the first half, immediately finds the range and bangs in a 20-footer. West is in the middle of things on defense, too. Jerry intercepts a pass and feeds to Jerry Lucas for a layup, and the West All-Stars boost their lead to six points. At 
at this point, the captain of the New York Knicks takes over. Willis Reed moving outside, away from Al Cinder's long reach, connects on a 15-foot jump shot. The next time down court, the East goes to Reed again, and he drills it home from about the same distance. Coach Larry Costello decides it's time to talk defense with his Western All-Stars. But the strategy sometimes doesn't work. Back in action, it goes to Willis Reed, and he connects again, and the East takes the lead in the game. San Diego's Elvin Hayes tries a shot but misses. Dick Van Arsdale there to grab it and feeds to Hayes for a fine drive to the hoop. Reed is back at his favorite spot, but this time the West is ready for him. Two men double teaming. Reed can't get the clear shot. Hayes gets the ball, takes it over to Jerry West, who feeds Al Sindor, and Big Lou's on the way to a stuff shot. <laughs> 